G'day, and welcome to JTackle TV. Today we're going to talk about some of our very favourite lures, ones that we find ourselves tying on almost all the time. In fact, if we're motoring around offshore, locally, in the bay, um, or in blue water for that matter, we've got these types of lures tied on our rods pretty much all the time because they're just so versatile, so successful, and so productive. And that lure is the sinking stick bait, or sinking pencil. We probably cut our teeth on these back in the early 80s on GTs and you'll see big things like this. Uh, large 150 gram type of things that you'd cast on a GT rod, sinking, uh, sinking pencils. Um, awesome big pieces of kit made out of wood and you know, big trebles or big singles hook uh, hanging off them. Um, a sensational thing. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about smaller stuff, our small sport fish, our inshore tuners and mackerels but also things like dolphin fish and yeah, possibly wahoo and a whole bunch of uh, offshore critters would, uh, will easily eat these lures. They range from exotica that you'll hardly uh, find anywhere except in your really specialist shops to relatively mainstream lures. Just run through some of those exotia, exotica here. Something like uh, this guy here is a, uh, a tackle house lure, uh, saltier pencil, and uh, just a superb thing to be casting on a 30 to 50 pound spin stick chasing you know, smaller GTs, but also big yellow fin tuners and, and big long tails and stuff like that. Um, a great, great lure, a bit expensive, but uh, super effective. Weird looking stuff like this, uh, Ema Fletchette, and uh, with a, uh, a spinner blade down here on the tail, a pair of hooks, uh, Ema are well known for producing a wide range of sinking uh, stick bait, sinking pencils, and uh, this is a great little thing. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it with spotties with this little spinner bait. It might be a little bit too attractive for them. You mightn't hang on to it very long. Something like this guy here, another piece of exotica, uh, CB1 Tiny Ozma. Uh, very, very rare lure and uh, uh, pretty effective little thing, um, but certainly uh, expensive and don't want to feed this one to mackerel either. We come now to the two that we cut our teeth on with these types of lures. Uh, we have a dual uh, Adagio. It's probably close to the most well-known of all of them. If you're going to tie one thing on, pretty hard to go past. 30 odd grams, cast like an absolute bullet, these things. So very much a substitute for your, uh, your chrome, chrome slugs and that type of thing. And uh, a beautiful lure, yeah, wonderful action in the water and attracts all manner of fish. You hear guys catching snapper, and stuff like this on these lures if they're twitching down near the bottom. But your tuners and your mackerels will pretty much fight themselves to get at these sorts of things. Fabulous piece of gear. The other one that we uh, we always default to is a, a little guy here called Ema Honey Trap. And he's uh, a classic lure. When you're not looking for something that sinks quite as quickly, a little bit more finesse perhaps in your flat situations than your, uh, than your dual Adagio. Uh, if you found yourselves chasing a, uh, a golden trevally or, uh, or a long tail tuna on the flats, wow, this thing here is, uh, is just a class act. Uh, so keep that one in mind. You've got your mainstream lures now that you'll see around uh, in a lot of shops. Uh, things like this Baste bungee cast, uh, just a, a, a great example. Pretty much going to do the same job as your dual Adagio. Fabulous little piece of kit. Super skinny guy here, Blues Code Slim by Maria. Uh, wonderful, They're one of my favourites for long tails. Seems to get them to bite really, uh, really aggressively. Lovely uh, lure as well. And probably the last of the really uh, well-known ones is your Jackson um, Muscle Shot. Stumpy little lure, this one. Very, very heavy again, like all these guys, being a sinking lure, very long casting. Another one that's really worthy to have in your tackle box. The big guys have gone into this as well. Shimano uh, produced this one here. Uh, this is a Shimano uh, Orca Lure. Uh, it's a 140, it's one of the only sinking ones in their range. So it's good because it's a little bit bigger than the average ones and uh, you know, might be comparable with this guy here in, uh, in what you're likely to do with it, but vastly less expensive. So you know, if you're in a situation where there's some mackerel around, or you just haven't got the, the, the budget to stretch to the really ex expensive exotica, then Shimano lures like this are certainly well worth your while. We kind of think of these lures as twitching baits. So they're not baits that we would uh, use like a chrome slug. 
Now we don't cast them and flat wind them fast back to the boat. We would cast them out and twitch them, a bit like a really aggressive barra type of uh, action. So your rod's going to be twitch and pause, twitch and pause, twitch and pause. That twitch and pause action is one of the great things about these lures. Your lure stays in the strike zone for a long period of time. It's not ripped back to the boat at high speed like your chrome slug. It's out there twitching, flashing. These lures have got big flat sides on them and that reflects a lot of light. And the fact that they're out there moving slower will give the fish time to see them. Great productive lure when the fish aren't really uh, thickly balled up on the surface. You know, if your fish have just gone down and you've got to the spot where they've been, the type of lure that you want to throw out to those places. You can bring fish back up to the surface, it can bring your, your, your solitary fish, your loner fish in, and uh, super productive in those sorts of situations. You can work these things really, really slowly and, uh, and get bites. You can cast them out and sink um, you know, a long way down near the bottom and twitch them down, down there as well. Um, very, very effective. You'll notice on all these lures that we've just uh, showed you, one overriding commonality they've all got trebles on them. <laughs> now this is a little hobby horse of mine on these particular lures, I just like trebles on them. I think they work better than single hooks. Uh, you need to question the quality of the treble hooks on all lures that are fitted standard with trebles, and all these lures do come standard with trebles. Uh, the trebles are generally pretty, pretty good quality, owners by and large, but oftentimes built for sea bass and a little bit light for what we would use them for. So upgrade to you know, maybe decoy or a heavier owner hook um, as a matter of course. There'll come a time, naturally enough, if you're catching big enough fish and you want to pull hard enough with heavy enough line on a bigger rod that you'll have to go to a single hook just to get the balance of the lure right. And if you add a treble hook, a big, big treble hook to these lures, naturally enough, it's not going to swim. But by and large, because of the twitching action, um, I just think you get better hook up rates with treble hooks. So when you look at a troll lure, the lure's running nice and straight through the water. Fish get a really good lock on that, come in and bite it, and you'll get a really good hook up rate with single hooks on that style of lure. This type of guy here, he's twitching, kicking really violently from side to side. Your fish don't get such a good lock on that type of lure. And when they haven't got a good lock on your lure, I think it's always a really good, uh, a really good thing to consider your trebles uh, as, a, as a way of getting better hook up rates. So we'll, we'll put trebles on, uh, singles on these occasionally, but by and large, most of the time, treble hooks. So next time you're out on the water and you see some schooling fish, tie one of these guys on. I guarantee you you'll be happy with the results. We certainly have been for a lot of years. Cheers. Good fishing.